but Gambit it now look to be they look to be good for this. I don't know if you're with me on that one, James, but you know, if, you, if I was to make a prediction, I would, I would go Gambit, not just because they have one round in the lead. I think the scales have slightly tipped back into their favor. I feel like they are back to normal now after the mishaps, if you will. But let's see what Tyloo can do. And let's not forget, it was Tyloo who got to 10 rounds on on their CT half, so if they can bring some of that essence into this half, then who knows? Again, let's not underestimate them. The T side was a struggle, but the CT side is where comfort is. It's where the plush pillows are, the silk robes, the slippers, the massage oil. Trying to give himself a gap, and that's going to work absolute wonders. Spots the second player coming out of the boiler as well. He can alert his teammates, and they can keep a focus on the A site. It's very difficult now to move into this angle for Adren. You know, he knows that an AWP is posted up, and does he ask for a flash? You know, time is starting to run low. There is no flash. Do they just raw peek into these angles? How do they? How do you manage this? There is not really a good solution here for Gambit. Adren will use the smoke, though, and push forwards and just try to make something happen. If he can somehow take out one player before the main push comes in and, and just destabilize the defense in that way, they can do this. Oh... Is he going to trade fast enough? No, no, he isn't. Oh, that's disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting from Excura. And another headshot to finish off the job. It, it was so... Something. The smoke was well timed for Astralis and allowed them to have a much easier time of things. So it looked it, it looked really bad and maybe it could have been executed better, but you can see the intention was was there from complexity. It must have been an expectation of two people to play the numbers game. Unfortunately, they're playing against Astralis and you need more than numbers. Yeah, you certainly do. Magis looks really good today so far and obviously a player that's really developed so well into this system. The newest edition of course. That's it thanks. That's a nice spray through the smoke, then we'll pick up one. Glaive wants some as well, and he's gonna get some. Here comes the rest of complexity, looking to try to trade onto these players. They'll be successful against Glaive, but Zipex is still alive and keeping with that AK, and he's gonna clean up the rest of these players with a PT50 out right at the end for the cheeky ace. Again, like I, I have to stress that how Razors have been playing this in such a methodical way. I'm like gaining a lot of respect for their Inferno re already, only four rounds into it. And now we see the buy versus the buy. All right then. A fast peek from Woxic. Oh, there are flames. There's almost nowhere to stand. And Woxic has a two HP and other follow-up grenades. Hasn't seen a thing, and that is a great start for Team Liquid, but they need to finish well also. Orping on the T side of Inferno, not the easiest thing to do. Who are your go-to V-picks for this match? I think it would probably be... Oh, they difficult. I think I would probably go for Nitro and, uh, and Woxig. It's always tough though with Team Liquids. <laughs> I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna go for Woxic because <coughs> I think uh, obviously a team like Team Liquid will get a lot, uh, a lot more attention than Hellraisers. And Hellraisers have really got some players on their team. I really hope they can do something in this major. Although 2 HP Woxic might have a hard time of doing something on this occasion. Hellraisers running the clock down and trying to exhaust Liquid. Okay, Liege. That's a nice one tap from you. Flash into pool to allow him to. Dare to repeak. Doesn't overextend though. They know they have uh, a good situation now. 35 seconds on the clock, and look where the bomb is on the radar. The bomb needs to be collected. Do they save or something now? Like this is two, three players really weak before they've even gone into a bomb site. 20 seconds to go. This is really tough to make this work. Uh, luckily for them, you know, Liquid have two, only two players on the bomb site, so maybe there's a chance here, but it's going to be very difficult. And that is already Liege is going oh to town. God. Oh my god, he's just crushed everyone on the entire team. That is so impressive.
Haven't seen the AWP on the big side of things to be able to challenge against that. And back to pistols for the T side. You don't want to see that so early on in the game. T side in front can be really powerful. I feel like, oh my god. Absolutely laying waste. Just that American airstrike happening Ooh. in the middle. More grenades coming through. They're walking right on top. That's a two for one. Shazam striking gold here. And now it's just Smuya. One versus three. That was wonderful. The Air Force showing up in the middle of all of that. Now, can he get the bomb plant down? This this is kind of scary. No, this is this is really scary for complexity because this is Smuya in a situation where you can't possibly work together. Def to guard B, Android to guard A. And I think they're playing this pretty wise. You just don't even take the fights. Don't even take the fights at range. You never know when he's going to be scoped in, when it's going to be proper. Just stay hidden until you hear where the bomb's going to go down, and you can try and play it from there if you really want. But Smuya, pretty early on in his professional career, has shown that he is so deadly in these clutches, and he's so deadly when there's a lot of open map for him to work with. 45 seconds on the clock. He's got three kills. He needs an ace clutch. What a thing to do early on in the game as well if he can. 39 seconds, clearing the apartments. Is he going to find the right timing here? Walking him around the corner on the other side of it, waiting his android. Now the knife is out instead. And WP. Oh, he just almost looked. I kind of want to see that from Android's position. He looks so uncomfortable. That's the quad kill. Now the bomb is down as well. And death is Brit versus Brit here to try and see who's going to win it. Let's see how this works out. He's down in the pit. He's got the right idea with the scope up towards the bicycle on that corner. And Def, is he going to take the apartments? Yes, he will. Walk up that way instead. Trying to see if he can get the better angle, but it's very dangerous. It's a flashbang as well, but Molotov on Def. He could really force him out as well. Smuya just waiting. No grenade being pulled out yet. And oh, he gets the no scope shot on him as well. Down to 18 health and Smuya, the five-man clutch. Incredible. Getting every single one of them. the map and just B has been working and it's been throwing Hellraisers off balance just keep to it it takes some balls to call for that I think repeatedly especially if you think that your opponents can read it easily but we'll have a mix up here from Gambit Hellraisers need this round they've bought up fully AWP back onto Woxic Dead Fox is stuck on an MP9 and their utility absolutely sucks they surely have to get aggressive and Isa can start it off with sewers Angel moving around upstairs, looking for something. That's a perfectly timed flashbang. Mir goes wide. Ether spray won't hit the mark. He was blind, of course. Some spray towards that short B position in case another CT is getting curious. So a man lost for Hellraisers. Is there a response they can have? Angel starting to flank the long position. He really wants to get something done. In the meantime, Woxic has fallen back, perhaps to cover a potential push from toilets. Now Angel's just biding his time around the bicycle area, but Mo might be peeking him soon. This is so important. Angel surviving and getting information, maybe a kill or two, slowing them down. In comes Woxic once again with the AWP. Angel kicks it off the big kill. As now the trade is attempted by Adren. Angel defends and with Woxic to support with the AWP. They're looking really good right now, Hellraisers. Three players left for Gambit as they try to figure this one out. There's 30 seconds to go and the bomb is very far away from a bomb site. What do they do? They have to take a huge risk here. And Angel is crushing this A play single-handedly. And I've got Bondic moving back to me in case rotation is required. Mir going wide, that's the bomb loss, that's everything. There are only 12 seconds left. And, oh um, my god. That is ace from Angel. He's just wiped everybody out. I, I wonder what the... And you can fix my stuff for me. But anyway, we have Optic Gaming on the CT side of Inferno here against Tai Lu. And this is, I think as they alluded to on the desk, I think a game that should be just up in the air. Tai Lu's style, it's just chaotic. And I can't wait to see what they have in store for Optic Gaming, who will be starting off with that CZ on Snappy, which I really like, and an HE. That's cool. Yes, uh, a CZ or a 5.7, but I'd say mainly a CZ, is really good in a CT pistol round. If you're playing a position where a rush is likely, let's say you're playing 
the balcony on Inferno. Let's say you're playing the drop on Cobblestone when it was in the map pool. Um, still available on Facebook, of course. Or another place. A, a, a 5-7 and or a smoke to a company. It can be super powerful. He's got usually on the side with USP and Gade in a normal spot. That's a very nice shot from him and he will allow his teammates to run this back. Gade, what are you doing? That's four kills from him. Monstrous. There's the ace as well. That was nasty from start to finish. That was absolutely disgusting. Not the same person as the one that they just like. It's some sort of stunt double that's he's had, way more he's fit had than him. Drinks, he's all over. And it's so funny. I just you should definitely watch. It's so funny to watch. <laughs> also watch Under Siege because those movies are great. Of course it they is are. Heyday. Eleven to eight. We're back in it. All the issues are fixed. We've got four AKs in the map ten. Spirit on a two-round run, and Tyloo trying to make this comeback happen. This is a sketchy buy from them, though. They force up here again, missing the heavy machinery. Thomas, two UMPs. Good nades, decent damage, nice chip down on Dima. So, back in the action, round number 20. The scoreline is 11 to 8, favoring Team Spirit, who are now on the T side, and they have been looking pretty impressive here on Inferno. They just need to follow through with, with what they've been doing, and it seems like they are going to end up winning this map, unless Tyloo can make some sort of mad comeback. They forced into this round, and it is a very questionable force buy. They do have some smokes and some grenades to work with, but this can quickly run out. And Team Spirit actually going to maybe try and speed up behind this. They almost Counter flash coming out, Ben Tenderly taking down Dima. A bit more damage out, and they're stuck on the other side. I don't know why they want to be so quick, Spirit. They must have been able to guess that there weren't going to be smokes and molotovs for days here on the Tyloo side. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they thought that there was going to be pistols. This wouldn't be a buy. We talked about how crazy it seemed, but actually they're going to stick around at the B bomb site. This is so tough, Ben Tet. What a job to do. Although somebody abandoned his idea to rotate away. A little bit of pressure to that A bomb site almost pulled them out. One smoke left on Ben Tet, and when he sees this come over, he should put it down right now, no matter what. 25 seconds left, but he's not going to use it. He's waiting, spray through from somebody who's done so much damage. Remember, he was tagged low right off the bat, and Ben Tet will That's now a triple hiding in the corner, still got the help. Going for the quad, he could even get the A. Stab cost now, spraying through, and there's the A from Ben Tet. Well, if you wanted to get back in the game, this is. Spirit 20 to 18. It just feels like there's no end to this at the moment. It's still kind of incredible that Ben Ted is at 37 kills, quite a bit ahead of everybody else. He's been having a very, very fine game here on Inferno, much better than he was on Overpass. Of course, sticking around as long as the Molotov is up at the bottom of mid, but doesn't really want to fight it that much longer. He didn't have any backup there either. Tyloo don't even want to want to take that battle and banana this round. They don't want to deal with it whatsoever. They've had a lot of trouble. This double up setup has been strong. Coldy's turned turned into a monster. Nice flashbang. Going to force him back. They need to force him back more. Keep Dima at the B bomb site. If you hit A like this, it's going to be playing the game on nightmare. Yeah, but think of the resource it is for Spirit, just knowing that Coldy's just going to shut them down if they show up. Like he's done it time and again. So. Maybe you can't even blame Tyloo for wanting to, to not subject themselves to that any further. The smoke is going to block off Archway. The Molotov's not going to touch anyone on Quad and Dab Cost. Flashbang not going to get the timing shot there. But Demos around the corner. Grenade, nobody there in the ninja corner. Are they going to fall back and try and challenge Quad yet again? The bomb is here. Just a little bit of a Dima takes down one, could easily follow it up, and that's a beautiful double kill. With 30 seconds left, there's not much hope for the rest of Tyloo to actually make it anywhere. That's the indication of the B hit as well, that it was supposed to be a B pinch. And look at this, Davkos and Dima, now it's two off. These, but I think Coldy should get one, but Dima's gonna get all five kills wow. in the round. Delivers an ace to give them a 21-18 lead. Yeah, it has been a slightly, while. Slightly, just a couple, you know. It, yeah, you almost feel bad because it just does feel a little, it did feel a little bit depleted there for a while. And you're just curious of, you know, what, what, what you can lean on if you're Optic Gaming. This is now five rounds in a row for them if you go back to that first time. So they start feeling a little bit better on the SMG config making bank. If they drop down into his waiting arms, he's going to love that. 
As the flashbang, it misses though with a straight up headshot right in the chin. He's gonna get another one in easy ace possibly. And there it is. All five kills for config. That'll get him going. That's a lot. Otherwise, things could go south very quickly on a team that is very scary on a T side. Yeah, everything to play for now. So never one until it's one against Fade Clan, that is for sure. We've seen it time and time and time again. You can start with advantages, but you often won't finish with much of anything against Faze. Gotta be Antizian with plenty of grenades on this T side. Carrigan will hear the players moving away from the long position. And that may send Brain and Nico back towards short, wondering what to do. Seems that holding long is the focus. Best use of the USPs, perhaps, as far as A is concerned. Nobody, um, I was going to say nobody in, in uh, CT spawn, but Rain has made his way there. So big, they made sound cues moving away from long, and they walk back. But uh, there are two players now here in that long position. Short has been taken by the bomb carrier in the meantime. Smoke on the balcony, and we may see four players quickly towards A for phase. Big start from next. Double kill towards long position, and they swarm on the A site. Phase now needs to find some clutch. Next just doubled his kills, by the way. Yeah. His teammates are doing a good job doing their roles. Next is not needed. And rain is needed. Olofmeister and Guardian also needed in this situation for phase as they push forwards. A smoke to make things even more awkward. Olofmeister though with a pop onto the site is a menacing presence here and they have to deal with him. He'll turn around another headshot. In fact, it's Guardians though, but time is starting to run out. They've got to keep making the frags happen, but Nex is on one. Got himself four kills at the moment, looking for that ace as Tizian is baiting, is really making it work out. And Nex will take full advantage and he ace for him indeed. Lovely. Like when you're on that, that we see people there all the time, like uh, even on the Pistron, the position that Snacks was in, and no one went forward to clear that part, part out. So even the guys who jumped down, not spinning to at least check balcony, they get punished. And given all the rifles that they lost in the round before this one, yeah. they just can't do anything. Well, that's, I that's mean... A really rough sequence of events for NIP. I think NIP were really thinking... Since we're making so much noise running up the hallway here, if anyone is either in the default corner in, in, up, on the, up on the balcony there, or in that position that Oscar was in, they're going to show themselves, right? Because they can hear it coming, and we're throwing all the grenades and everything, so... Very cool play for him this time. Bit dangerous. Chris, going to stick around and take that fight anyway. They really seem to be sort of uh, building up some confidence here, Mouse Sports. They've been taking these fights throughout the game. Hasn't really been necessary, but they're sort of back in the lead now, so who can blame them? In the lead and have a pretty ballooned economy because of the free AKs. And around uh, against just pistols where it looks like they're gonna get out scot free. So five to three. That's an ace on Chris, by the way. I mean rather where if you're just looking the right way at the right time you can win a really crucial round. You see it so often, but it's... I mean, the, 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 the timing is crazy when you, when you watch it, when you have all the information, you see the x-ray. So as we get into some late rounds around the A bomb site, that kind of scenario will come to fruition. For the time being, we've got Hellraisers not going for a full fourth buy. Now, some teams will buy Desert Eagles um, in the second round and not Kevlar, and then buy Desert Eagles again in the third round should they lose the second. But again, as the desk alluded to, utility is nice on the first buy round. And you want to start the right way. Yes, you certainly do. A slow one now from Big on the anti-eco. <coughs> Gotta give respect to Hellraisers. We have seen exactly what they're capable of. I think pretty much everyone on Hellraisers has a deadly pistol to their name. See, got be going for a solo play with the Mac 10 playing for information. It's getting tagged up there. Doesn't get himself into the bomb site, which would have been nice. But he does pull some rotation. You can see that Hellraisers are very quick to rotate because that's really the nature of things. If you have pistols in a round such as this, you want to make sure that they are in the right place. So fakes can become very strong from the T perspective. 
slowly moving in. Crouch pick from Smear, and now Tijin has a, a question. Does he try and trade the frag with the bomb in his hands? It's a tough ask. Spots one player in that sandwich position. We'll call for some backup from Main. 20 seconds on the clock for this bomb to go down. They have control of um, Ivy for now, but you can see Isa is flanking that position. Keep an eye on that on, the, on your radar, because if you make the play through the front, then it's not going down. Here is Isa, round the back, and he's up the bomb from the, being planted, and here's Angel now. Seven seconds, Isa just needs to hide, and that is a wrap. Again, a developing situation. Oh my god. It's so important to have control of Ivy if you're going for, let's say, a default plant. Sounds like an excuse to me. <laughs> yeah, not as dedicated to improving my, my gameplay, am I? Not as I used to be. Waxic peering up towards middle. And here we go towards long. Angel gonna uh, throw a grenade in. He sees the flash that come out, turns from it, and he's able to hold this. Another flash coming, he turns to the left. That is great from Angel. A really cool sequence. He's going for the ace. He's going for all five, and oh, what a statement. Drake and walks right into it. That is beautiful. coming together and significant drop-offs in performance from the quote-unquote old guard. We're seeing more of those names disappear and more brilliant young talents take the forefront of Counter-Strike. It would be such an interesting swing of events if we didn't have a single Swedish team in there. Yeah, that's crazy. one Swedish, so fanatic. And it, it, yeah, fanatic, I, I get what you're saying. And IP, to, 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 to further that up as well, I know that that's not quite the same old guard, but even not to have any of the Brazilians in, that's become something else we've gotten really used to. And it's one yeah. or the other. This game to determines it. It's crazy. <laughs> I shouldn't say any Brazilians. It's tacos, obviously, and with tacos liquor. It's the same situation, though, right? Indeed. Well, here we go. The all-important pistol round here. They might be up. No, they can close this one out. All of a sudden, they're one step close up to a very convincing victory here on Trent. to receive first. He's going to have players in front of him, only good for one. As the bomb gets closer and closer, it's Forrest with a 3K with the Glock. He really does not want to go home just yet. It looks like they might have done enough there. Fur just floundering on the bomb side itself. He's got players all around him, surely not going to get a kill here. I don't know how he's still alive, Matt. Well, Forrest gets for Stewie. Wrecked by him as well. Five kills, an ace from Forrest in the pistol. We talk about... He still had his armor as well, so that was significant money removed uh, with the bomb going off. So they did, excuse me, Cold actually has it. I didn't see it already purchased that. Either way, it could have been done more efficiently. There's no question about that. Yep, absolutely. Well, round nine and complexity. After what we saw on the first one, I can't believe we got the shot to this point. Yay, Molotovs himself. And with the chaotic start to round number nine, it will be fallen to capitalize there. They tried to Molotov the car. I'm not sure if we caught it. I was looking at my screen. With the Molotov missed by the terrorists, and now fallen is just tearing them apart. As uh, they look a little bit flustered there, right at the bottom. They've lost this opener, but they have won five versus threes before. This round not necessarily over, but Shazam has been tagged up as well. He's on 45 points of health.
Flash, Shazam with the off T side, trying to compensate for the loss. And we'll commit into Banana at this point, minutes ago. Forget utility on the CT side. Mind you, if you want to look to trades and you want to look at isolating a site, you can bring it to the three on two take if you get the read right. Now, MyBR is not ready for the rotations. And they've only got the one smoke still to play with, so. Those two kills are massive. MIBR knew the situation went aggressive as a result. Ball is rotated around, bringing the op slowly, and they line up. They make it all too easy. I thought he might get away with one as they were searching inside the site, but round ball, but done surely. Shazam left with 23. They know exactly where he is. What a way to steal it back. First in five, and they keep all five alive. Well, there we go. And you want to finish. Second map about to begin, ladies and gentlemen, Astralis with one map in the bag, Liquid, back to the wall now, who will make it to the grand final, this map might decide it, here we go then, Liquid on the T side, they go for a fast B play as well, you can see four players make it five now, heading towards this side of the map, but look at the stack from Astralis, this is insane, they've got four players in the B bombsite map. Four, ready to go. Pretty solid situation to have considering the setup. The disc was well towards it, just yet to move. Nails now, no mistake about it. Taco's not even aware where that came from, and the disc oh finds a third. Of course, as well as he catches out Twist, he could start this off with an ace. It would be hard to imagine. Nitro even gives him the chance as he gets glaved down at the very least. Bomb committed to the site. No chance to retreat back for Nitro. Just crowds crawling for it. One versus three, and he nails it. That is a beautiful start. Reset. Delivers frag after frag after frag. Got to be really ill-equipped with the MP9 to take that duel. And that execute works out for Hellraisers, but I, I wonder if, if Big had stronger positions towards IV. As for me, I missed a, a few shots there as well, so I think that could have gone two different ways. And there's plenty of counter strike to come. Issa taking that early, no 4K for him this round. Yeah, that's definitely a problem, for sure. Oh no, that's the bomb down. I don't know if Smuya saw it falling forwards. Oh, okay, it was collected just as they saw it. Okay, this is a huge issue. This is a huge issue for Hellraisers. I don't know if they have much. Do they have much in the bank? Let's, let's see, let's pull that up. Yes, they have nothing in the bank. And they are very likely losing this round, James. This is. This is quite a predicament. What do you do here? I think you really need a bomb plant if you can possibly find one. I don't think you want to s really s save, but <laughs> there's also no good option, is there? There's just no good option for them. Yeah, I mean, with five, they don't often try and get a pick going before they execute into a site. With three, that compounds the problem and almost forces their hand. Because you, you don't want to like save three players and then have the, ma the money be really imbalanced on and, and that's like a fight in of itself, just balance the money out later on. I, I thought Gobby would make that play earlier on because I, I feel like the IV action would deter the T's from even hanging around there. But here comes the flank, 30 seconds on the clock. And again, Hellraiser's slowly moving in. Samir running distraction now, 20 seconds, and they've Angel's made his way out, but those two are still just emerging right now. Oh! No! Smear. Well, he's got a kill at least. Now he's got two. Really hard to plant a bomb in that situation, and Smear will make up for it by uh, pretty much taking out everybody else. I mean.